And thank you very much for joining us here on PM Express. It's been the last month of a lot of controversy. And finally, it is over. It ended last week, but there were two additional days of mop-up, which ended just yesterday. I'm talking about the voter registration exercise. We're going to look at the successes, the challenges, and then most importantly, implications for the 2020 elections. Let's go through what we have for you. And this is a map of Ghana provided by the Electoral Commission itself that gives you a geographic sense of the registration so far in the last month. We see that if you look at the total here, 16.6 million people have been registered. And this exceeds the EC's target going into the registration exercise itself. And if you look at the, the national spread, Greater Accra obviously is leading with uh, 3.4 million people registered. If you also look at the Shanti region, it follows uh, the Greater Accra with uh, 2.9 um, million people. Now, let's look at the Volta region, because the Volta region is a very interesting region because of the controversy that we've seen, the accusations of voter suppression in that part of the country. But it still has a pretty high um, number of people registering compared to the previous voters register. So in the region of 920,000 people, quite a lot, if you look at the population in that part of the country. Now, if, again, if you, if you go to... Um, if you go to the, the northern region also, we have one point, one, one, just a slightly over a million people uh, registering there. And then you come to the, uh, if you come to the western region, you have 1.1 million people. It, it, these uh, figures mean a lot if you begin to consider the swing region. So you're looking at the Volta, you're looking at the western region, uh, high numbers of people registering. The Greater Accra region also. The Bono, um, you know now that has been now separated into Bono and Ahafo. Together, we are talking in about uh, 3 million people, but now being separated. So Bono alone has just 584,000 uh, people. Um, and, and then Ahafo has also, uh, you know, something in the region just, just uh, around... Um, around uh, 644,000. So you begin to do your own permutations on this. But the global figure is the one that many people are going to look at because EC has exceeded this target. In the midst of COVID-19, many thought EC could not hit this figure. When we first did this, this analysis for you uh, here on PM Express, we projected that the Electoral Commission will be inching close to 70 million people. And exactly what we see pan out at the end of the registration in spite of COVID and in spite of the concerns that had raised uh, across the board. I want to bring you, this is in essence, a breakdown of what we saw on a daily basis as the EC registered people. And the EC has done this for transparency purposes. So you could track this uh, in their own systems. Then you can compare uh, and see what was happening on a daily basis. If you have questions, you could raise it with them and they could, they could get you uh, some answers there. So this is uh, uh, EC's own figures, as we've seen. Now, I want you to pay attention to regular distribution of persons with traumatic fingers. So these are individuals whose fingers had been traumatized to the point where the system struggles to recognize them. And this is just 0.37% of those registered across the country. So it's not too much of a factor just 61,000 people um, in the bigger scheme of uh, six, 60 million, pretty minor um, in, in terms of its uh, implications for, for, uh, for the elections going forward. Because remember, that it's the ultimate game plan. This document is the basis for the 2020 elections. Let's look at the number of applicants challenged. And this is an area that has become controversial, a basis for some of the violence we've seen and yet, if you look at this figure here, it's pretty negligible. And yet, it's the source of so much tension. The challenge process. Electoral um, commission officials have always encouraged the parties to pick a challenge form. If you suspect somebody is a minor or isn't a Ghanaian, just go here. And you'll be part of the 30 
1,462 people who will pick up for men challenge. But by the end of the process, more than 30 days, only 0.20% of, uh, of people who attempted to register had been challenged. We've had only 30,000 challenge, um, challenges in the process since it started. Pretty small, but it's become such a, a, a big matter. And you wonder why the electoral, the political parties were not using this enough, but rather were fighting some cases and firing and shooting and people dying in a process when you could simply have picked up a form. Pretty small. It tells you that compared to the 60 million people registered, it, what, it tells its own story. The story it tells is that the, the illegality of young minors and foreigners getting on the register is pretty small. It is not impossible because as we've seen and we'll discuss that tonight, um, more than 60 Ivorians have been caught with voter ID cards, right? And so they, they were missed in the challenge process, but they got onto the register. We'll talk about that. But this tells a very interesting story. Now, let's look at the basis for the registration, what people use as documents to identify themselves to get onto the register. The Electoral Commission tells us that the Ghana card forms 60% of all documents submitted as a basis for registration which in itself is instructive because before the registration started there was a lot of concern about whether or not the NIA had done enough to register people to get them onto the register especially when we've changed the, the law and the regulation to make the the, the Ghana card the passport um, as, as a basis for the registration we've excluded the previous voter identification card the birth certificate as well, which became a subject of some court, um, court actions. And by the time that it ended, 16 million people, 60% of them went with the Ghana card. That is one of the key points there that the EC says shows um, impressive, um, I guess, approach to doing this because of the uh, cooperation they've had from the NIA. Then passport, obviously many Ghanaians don't have passport, and so you see at 1.9%, and then you look at the Garanta system, and this is where you come in, you don't have any of these documents, and I come and say I can vouch for you because I have already registered. That is 37%. Should this be of concern, because this is significant, that is a process that is not rigorous enough, and so it's subject to a lot of abuse. Should the 37.76% who got into the register on the guarantor system be of concern. We'll try and, and look at that. But we've seen also some issues emerging. Registration of foreigners have become an issue. At least the Immigration Service has arrested some people. The Electoral Commission have issued a statement on this. We are going to try and get to the bottom of how we deal with that matter. Um, 66 Ghanaians have come on, uh, or foreigners have come on, which has been an issue. EC says it is investigating this particular uh, issue. So let's look at the successes, the challenges, the implications for 2020. My guest joining me tonight is Dr. Srubo Kwaku. He is the Director of Electoral Services at the Electoral Commission. Uh, Dr. Kwesi Jonah also joining me tonight. He is the Senior Research Fellow at the Institute of Democratic Governance at IDEC. And Albert Kofi Ahin is the National Coordinator of the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kodeo. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time here on PM Mexico. I want to start with you, Dr. Kweku. I'm grateful that you could make time to talk to us. I mean, let's start with the very latest exercise you did over the weekend, which you call the MOPAP. Give us a sense of how that went over Saturday and Sunday. What picture is emerging from that, uh, Dr. Kweku? Thank you, Evans, and good evening to Mr. Jonah and uh, Mr. Ahim. Uh, it's interesting to know that Mr. Ahi used to be my boss. And Mr. Juna was a lecturer when I was at Labour. So I've met my <laughs> senior officers, and I believe we are going to have a very good dialogue. Um, like you said, in the course of the exercise, we said that based on whatever happens, there will be a form of mop up. But thank God, at the end of the exercise, we heard that the only few people were outstanding to be registered. So we decided to hold a mop-up at the district offices. 
we did that on Saturday and yesterday. And the figures, you no, know, I think they're about 30,000 uh, 30, or so, yes. So um, in a mop-up, you managed to mop up an additional 30,000 uh, folks onto the register? Yes, yeah, um, Saturday was around 13,000. Okay. And yesterday was around 17,000. Hmm. I mean, so what, what we're still within the 16.6 uh, million. So, yes, the figures you were churning out excluded the last day of the registration. Okay. So if you look at your program, you read that the sixth day of the sixth uh, uh, phase was not there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was managed the, sixth, uh, the last day of the main exercise and the two days of the um, mop up. So now it's around 16.9. 16.9. That is very impressive in terms of the sheer numbers of people who had money to register. Um, Mr. Albert Ahin, quickly give me your, your assessment of first how this entire process has gone now that we are learning of the, of the sheer numbers of people on the register. 16, almost 17 million people. Did you expect that number to be on the register by the other close of registration? Yes, uh, thank you very much. And uh, my regards to your listeners this evening. 16.9 mm. uh, million. Uh, the projection or the estimation made by the EC originally was, I think, about um, 15, 15 million. I 15 hear. million, yes. And then the registration exercise. Uh, no, the, the last election, when we did the unit uh, committee elections and the um, the other one, you know, the register stood at about 16.4. Okay. So 16. if we now 8. have... 16.8. 16.8, yeah. 16. So if we now have... Okay. If the new registration has given us this figure of 16.9, then uh, I would say that it was worth going into the new uh, registration exercise. Because one would have thought that we're going to exceed this number. So it straight away tells us that we may have done away with a lot of the dead uh, names. We may have you know, been able to do away with a lot of the ghost names or whatever, uh, whether it's foreigners, whichever. So I think that 16.9, as against 16.8, gives a true figure or a true interpretation of what is actually obtaining on the ground, so far as this registration is concerned. Um, uh, Mr. Jonah, what's your take on the numbers now? Again, it's interesting that uh, Mr. Ahing has brought in what used to be 16.8, 16.9, 16.8 before, 16.9 now. Of course, we are going to now do cleaning. We are going to do exhibition. And again, that hopefully will lead to a further cleaning of this. But where we stand now, these are what we've ended. What's your own reading into if the I'm, final If you might let me chip in these figures again. Please do. Yeah. The 16.8 that uh, happened in 2019 mm -hmm. was the active figures. Okay. We had 0.8 which were quarantine because of multiple and exceptional. So if we were to put the exceptional plus the active one, the rate would have been 17.6. The same way this 16.8 now includes the uh, multiple list and the rest. So it is only one that has been cleaned yeah. that will get the actual figures. So if if the previous one were to be like this one, it would have stood as seven, stood as seventeen point six. Okay, uh, um, and and this one once we clean the seventeen point the sixteen point nine possibly will also go down further, right? It will, uh, automatically it will go down. It will go down. Um, Mr. Jonah, what's your comment on that? Remember that going into this, there were some who argued and said the, the existing register was bloated because there were too many foreigners, too many uh, dead people, too many young people who were, have been put on it. Now that we know the final figures, it's going to end up at 16.9. What, 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 what's, what's your reading of the, of the figures? What, what does it tell you? Mr. Jonah, please kindly unmute your... Great, I can hear you now. Thank you so very much, Evans. Um, if I've, I've just listened to my two colleagues in the studio, uh, uh, Mr. Ahin and Dr. Kweku. Uh, if you go by the estimate, 
of the GSS, Ghana Statistical Service, mm -hmm. approximately 17.1 million Ghanaians are above the age of 18 and above. Mm -hmm. So by the Ghana Statistical Service estimate, we have 17.1 million who are 18 and above. And, and so even though the EC itself estimated roughly 15 million and so on and so forth, the figure they have obtained now is so well below the Ghana Statistical uh, Service estimate of 17.1 million. Impressive. But what is uh, equally impressive is the fact that for us, if we had not conducted this new registration exercise, the names of deceased people will still have remained on the register. Now all those names have been cleaned. No, unless somebody called somebody from Audome Cemetery coming to register, I, 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 would, I would like to believe that the dead people's names have been completely erased from this register, and that is very, very positive. I, I, I think altogether, the figure that Dr. Kweku is mentioning, I mean, uh, 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 in, it's in itself very impressive. What I want to draw attention to is the fact that when they do the cleaning, that is multiple names and so on and so forth, we shouldn't ex expect any substantial addition because the total number of names that, that, that are recorded for multiple is not particularly, you know, large. Moreover, we have something called accidental duplicates. That is, this, we are talking about a situation in which the machine itself sometimes records somebody as having done multiple registration, when in fact the person has done only one. So if anybody expects any substantial reduction as a result of this exercise, the duplication exercise, uh, forget. It, 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 but even if it is just a few, the figures that the EC has so far come up with as the total number of people registered to vote in the 2017 election is quite impressive. Um, Mr. Kwaku, so tell me then, I mean, I started off by you telling me um, the, uh, your reaction, of course, your assessment of the mop-up, but the entire process from beginning to the end, now that it's finally closed, what's your verdict? What is the EC's own verdict? Knowing what the issues were going into it and how we've come out, um, what would you say? What was your, what's, your, what's your final verdict on it? Uh, I would say that God has been good to us. I'm saying God has been good in the sense that doing mass registration like this nature is not easy. And also coming within the COVID period. And there were people who were also saying that it was within the rainfall period. So there were a lot of challenges ahead of us when we, we decided to go into this. But God has been so good that if we go to the rainfall, you hardly heard of any place being disrupted by the rains. Then the COVID to the grace of God and the measure that we put in place. Initially, we all agreed that there were some challenges with the social distancing, but with time, the education and measures put in place, all these things were uh, ameliorated. So, you know, I would say that God has been good, and we also congratulate all Ghanaians, including the media, our colleague there, um, civil society organization, and everybody. We all contributed to the success of this, and we should part of ourselves for doing, doing a good job. Um, Mr. Jonah, let me, I want to bring you in here. One of the biggest concerns or, or justifications for put doing this was that the previous one was bloated with too many foreigners, too many young people, too many dead folks on it. Um, in your first submission, you talk about one of the, I mean, I think that's, that's the only thing you cited, that the fact that we've removed the dead from it. But looking at the current numbers that we finalized the new voters register with, does it justify the claims before that the previous one was indeed bloated? Yeah, well, uh, to a very large extent, yes, it, it, just, it, it justifies, you know, what the EC should realize is that we do not as yet have any method of taking the names of minors from the register. Mm. And even though we do not have accurate figures, anecdotal accounts that we have received clearly indicate that the number of people under 18 who registered in various parts of the country very huge. Mm. 
I mean, people saw registered people vouching for other people who themselves looked at 15 year old people. A 15 year old person had registered and was vouching for others to, to get onto the register as well. You see, the biometric technology that we are using it doesn't have the capacity to identify an under 18 person from an, a person who is more than 18. And this problem will continue to remain with us until such a time that the political parties, parents, and the EC collaborate to end this problem. Because I, even though the figure we are talking about is reasonably low, but believe you me, there are still names of very many people who are under 18 who have entered this present register. And this is something that we have not sufficiently discussed. Going into the future, this is an area that we'll have to focus on. But, but, but Mr. Jonah, isn't that why we passed a, a CI that took out both the, um, the birth certificate and the previous um, uh, voter ID card and restricted it for the first time to um, Ghana card and the passport, thinking that those two documents were more rigorous in eliminating some of the concerns that, of course, you've identified. So I thought that should have addressed that concern. It could. The, the, these two in themselves couldn't have addressed this concern because of the vouching system. Hmm. What, does the, what does the vouching system do? The, close to 38% of the people who registered, they were vouched for. It is guarantors that enable them to register. And in very many areas, especially in remote areas of the country, when a young person, obviously under 18, comes before you and you refuse, somebody has vouched that this person is a Kenyan and is over 18 years or above, who are you? Sometimes you get parents coming to tell you that this is my own child. And I say, the child is 18. And so it, it, this, is, this, is, this is a challenge. It is a virgin system that made it almost impossible for us to prevent minors from registering. Um, Mr. So Ahing, what, what's, what's your comment on that? Yes. Uh, in fact, I was also going to comment on this virgin system in the course of this uh, exercise. Uh, what we found out was that for most of the time, people who were vouching, if most of the time, they don't even know the people they were vouching for. It's like this contracting business that we were talking about some time back. You go to a center, you have finished your registration, or a party man comes to you and tells you, uh, please, let's go so that you can vouch for certain people who are here to, to, to register. And uh, it's very sad that for most of the time, they didn't even know them. You see, the law was said that you should actually be close to the person, somebody who might be a relative or somebody who is staying with you in the same vicinity or in the neighborhood. But here we are, you just saw people vouching for people just like that. So uh, we were recommending, or we would want to recommend that in future, this vouching system should be looked at seriously. If you are vouching for somebody and is under 18, you don't even in the first place know the person. How do you vouch for the age and even the, the, the nationality and that kind of thing? So it's something that we should take a second look at. Um, part of the conversation tonight is to also look at what lessons, the success and the challenges. Mr. Suribo Kwaku, the grantor system, for the first time we expanded it um, beyond what the numbers, we went to 10. You could grant a I mean, that's 10 people. Um, looking at what has happened, is there a lesson there for limiting it going forward or enhancing it? What is the EC's thinking? What are the lessons we're learning from it? Uh, what I would say is that uh, virgin for people is not new to our system. Mm -hmm. if, if you go to uh, the acquisition of passports and WIAC registration, people still have to guarantee for people. So until we are able to get a reliable identification system, the virgin system cannot leave our scene. If we take the 2019 limited registration, about 95% of the people were vouched for. 95%. And
Um, we've lost him there on, a, on the line. Uh, we'll try and get him back on because he was making such an important submission also. Um, but I want to come back to Ms. Ahim. Ms. Ahim, let's, let's quickly return to some, one of the most fundamental points of, of, uh, of controversy going into this. If I put it to you that 16.9, uh, if, if I put it to you that 16.9 million people as we have on the new voters register, as against 16.8 in the previous register, um, doesn't really, it doesn't really give you too much of a difference in terms of the justification for a new one, and that it's, it doesn't suggest that the previous one was really bloated because we're almost at the same numbers, what would, your, what would your reaction be? Because that was a serious yeah. point of controversy. Um, Mr. Kwakwa, am I still on the line? Yes, you are. You are. Just give okay. me a second. Yeah. I want to I get... Let me, let me take back to you. But, uh, I will give you a figure for uh, 2019. Okay. So if, if you take the explanation that I gave, that mm -hmm. the active names were 16.8, the inactive name, that the quarantine one was 8.8, that will give you 16.86. Mm. We believe that if we were to maintain the old register and we were to do limited registration, we were going to register, because last year we registered by 1.2, and that one was done at the district level. Mm -hmm. For the main registration, if we were to go to the field and do generally, we were thinking of maybe registering about, about 2 million. So that would have taken us to about 19.6, uh, getting to 20 million. Mm -hmm. So if we were to go by the uh, uh, old system of keeping the whole register and doing the limited, we have added approximately two, uh, two point something to this. So, you know, if you compare the current figure with the uh, uh, suggestion of maintaining one, then we have avoided or we have uh, eliminated about two point something figures. So, automatically, we, uh, comparatively, this figure is far lower if I've gone by the limited registration plus the old register. Okay. I mean, because I was, I was coming to that, because that was a question I was going to ask, um, ask uh, Mr. Ahin, that for those who still look at the figures as we have concluded now and compare it to the previous one and say, but the difference isn't too much, and so where is the justification for the claim that the previous one was bloated? You say that you would have still done a, a limited registration exercise, which would definitely have added your estimation two more two million more people to the yes. 16 million you had, almost 17 million you had plus before, which would have taken us close to 20 million people. Exactly, that's what I said. Okay, uh, Ms. Ahin, you agree with that assessment? Because um, you know, since the last registration, a lot of people, young ones who had 10, 18, had not registered. And definitely, they would have come to join. And they have joined this time. And if they have come in to add to the old one, and we still have 16.9, then the, that tells you that the old register had some names that were not supposed to be there. You know, that should have actually gone high. But if we are getting the same now, uh, the figure as we used to have at 16.8 or 16.9, then it means it was worth it. It was worth getting to it because uh, definitely people who had not taken advantage of registration, people who had just 18 would have added, and Kweku's number of 19 or 20 million would have been the, the situation. So a, a direct question then, because the EC had a lot of bashing going into this. Would you say and conclude that the EC had been vindicated at the end of the process? Sure. Sure. By my estimation, they have been vindicated. Um, Mr. Jonah, would you come to the same conclusion? They, they have been vindicated. If we take, uh, take this effort to take into account the violence that has characterized the process, they have been vindicated. They have been. Um, yeah. Can you expand on that? I mean, it, it, does it, is it only in the curing of the bloatedness of the previous register? In which other aspects would you say this vindication has emerged? Well, quite a few areas. As Dr. Quickus just said, many of us believed that in the light of the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, it was not very advisable. Mm, I think we're having a challenge with him, but we do have a challenge with his line there. 
Um, we'll hold him. Hopefully, when he comes back, he can rejoin. But let me ask that same question of uh, Mr. Ahing to expand on, on that. Ms. Ahing, beyond just the curing of the bloatedness, and, and I know you've been doing your own monitoring, you had you know, hundreds of people on the ground. In which other areas has the EC been vindicated? Um, in the area of the, the, the kits, the, 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 the machines that they use in the registration, mm -hmm. uh, the previous ones used to have a lot of breakdown. The fingerprint uh, machines and uh, so many things. You know, this one was very smooth. I would say that generally the operation was very smooth. And if it was smooth, then it means it was due to the fact that the machines that they were using was very helpful. And again, um, if you look at the fact that we operated within the COVID era, you know, that tells you that they have done quite a good job. Uh, before we went into this, there were a lot of uh, speculations here and there. Um, you know, so I think the machines helped, even if they broke down, which often occurred temporarily, they were able to fix that immediately. So yes, they also said, you know, the, the, the machines were, in fact, the real reason why they went in for uh, this new registration was the fact that the old machines were failing them. So they were going in for a new one. And indeed, the new one has vindicated that assertion. Mm. Um, hopefully, Mr. Jonah is back on that. Mr. Jonah, can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Jonah. Um, hello, Mr. Jonah. I think your, your Zoom is on mute. If you could unmute it. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, you were submitting. You are making a submission before we lost you briefly. Yes. You were elaborating. Yes. Yes. Yes, I think also that the fact that they were able to effectively cater for the aged, the pregnant and lactating women, PWDs, and so on and so forth, separately at the offices of the EC, made it so very easy for these people to get registered without adding to the queues that were forming at the registration centers. That was also something that uh, we should applaud. And uh, uh, in, in my opinion, generally, the 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 the, the EC has been educated to a very large extent. Okay, by the, the I'm going to take a break, but before I do that, I want to hear from Mr. Ahin. Mr. Ahin, I know Kodeo has been monitoring um, the entire process. So, mm -hmm. give me broadly what are the key points you observed in the entire process. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll break it down and analyze a few, including the case of the foreigners who have been arrested holding a card. But Ms. Ahim, first walk me through some of the key points that you've observed now that the process has, has ended, some of the, which we probably have touched on. But I want to give you a, a broad scope, so just touch on bullet for me what are some of the key points. I have touched on some of the good points. I'm saying that, for example, with regards to the rules and regulations of the game, the mm -hmm. EC was up to the point. With regards to the performance of the machine, the PBRs, they were OK, mm -hmm. at some point. What I wasn't too happy about, or Cody wasn't too happy about, was the fact that even though the EC was giving the agents the number of registered people at the end of the day, we still allowed, or they still allowed the agents to write names and sometimes confront people, registrants who were leaving to give them their particulars. And for sometimes, you know, this ended in some confrontation. It was a little bit chaotic in certain situations when people refused to do this kind of thing. But I think the EC should take a cue from this and next time tell them not to write any names at all because at the end of the day, you had the list of people who registered for the day given to you. So that is something that I thought uh, should have been you know, taken out. Then again, another area that was also of a worry is the uh, fact that uh, sometimes you find people challenging and fighting people. I wouldn't let you register because I suspect that you are not a Ghanaian. I suspect that you are a minor. But the law simply says that. Pick a challenge for it and then do the challenge. It does no need to fight. My third point is the fact that 
the EC allowed too many polka party uh, you know, people to be going around. They have given them accreditation. If I'm for party A, B, C, my people have maybe 10, you know, my location is 10, so that we can go around. If you allow polka parties to be frequenting the stations, you allow them to be bringing confusion, to be bringing chaos, to sort of also add to the already existing problems at the center. And you remember there was a gunshot at one point. Yeah. I believe if, they, if we go into this seriously, probably the person was not even accredited in the first place. Mm. You can be an MP, you can be a party secretary or whatever. But if the EC hasn't given you the accreditation, whether you are the chief executive or whoever you are, you are not supposed to be at the registration center. Unless, of course, you go there to do your own registration. These are some of the things. Then again, uh, Kondeo also observed in a few instances some military men at some police stations. Mm -hmm. We don't allow men to be at centers because they are not supposed to be there holding a gun. Those even at the centers who are the security people, we're not even holding a cane. We don't allow people to hold any weapon or anything around pulling centers, around exhibition centers. So in a few cases, I mean, it's not, it's negligible, but our reporters talked about areas where we had a few military men at some of these centers. I think next time we should take uh, these things into These military men, let them these military men, what did your reporters say they were there for? What, what were they there to do in these polling, in these registration centers? It's like they were on the beach. They were, they were going around to see what was going on. And sometimes they would go and something would happen and then they would, they, they would sort of intervene. And this is not the right, the right thing to do. If there would be military, they should be always at the periphery. They should be going around the, 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 the community. They should be standing by so that if there's any problem, they can, they can be called to come into us. But they themselves ought not to be at the center. That is not... not okay. I mean, very important points there from Kodeo. I'm going to take a break. When I return, I hear from Dr. Sibro Kwaku on some of the points. But I also want to hear on the now arrests that have been made post the registration of some 60-plus foreigners, Ivorians, who were found to be holding onto the um, EC voter ID cards at the point when we, the borders were still closed. And we had military men beefed up on the borders. That is key. The EC has issued a statement saying they are investigating that. I want to um, get to the bottom of this and, and get some reaction to this uh, as we drill down further. Stay with me. My guest on PM Express tonight, the uh, EC's Director of Electoral Services, Dr. Sribo Kwaku. Um, IDEX, uh, Kwesi Jonah, and of course, a national co uh, coordinator of the, uh, of the monitoring group, the Coalition of Domestic Election Ob Observers, Mr. Abed Ahin. Uh, Dr. Sirbo Kweku, um, we had reports, of course, the uh, immigration officials confirming the arrest of some uh, more than 60 plus uh, Ivorians who managed to get onto the voters' register and they have cards. I've seen a statement from the Electoral Commission. I wonder. Um, how did this happen, and was it with the um, complicity of some EC officials? Are you investigating this? Thank you very much, uh, Evans. As it is, when somebody comes to the place to register, and you are not sure of the person, you cannot challenge the person, but we expect that people within the community should know the people and so it has come to our attention. So the com I know the commission has invited the, the regional director and the district officer for interaction. So I believe that maybe by interacting with them, we'll get to the root of it. So let's wait and get to the bottom of the investigation before we draw conclusions. that. What's the plan going forward for that? Do you have timelines yet and when will that happen? Are you referring to the investigation? No, I'm talking about the uh, exhibition and the cleaning of the register which you just did, the final cleaning to finalize the document. We are, 
we, 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 as for the challenge cases, we know within this week, they should have concluded on the challenge cases, unless there are some outstanding issues that need further investigation. Mm. Then uh, the due duplication is ongoing, and adjudication is also ongoing. So we are hoping that within the next one or two weeks, we should be able to finish with the investigation and also working on the duplication. And it's our plans that go well in by the middle of next month, we will start with the exhibition so that we can go ahead and do the nomination uh, in October. In October. I mean, but also, yes. there, we also learned that you actually found people who are double registered. But isn't that why we have the biometric machines that were supposed to detect that at the point of registration? That's what I'm, I'm said, uh, the duplication. Mm. Uh, doc, uh, Dr. J uh, Jonah and uh, Ms. Ahin appreciate them very well. But for your, for your, your sense, let me try to explain. Electoral Commission does offline registration. Mm. So offline registration just means that the machines are independent of each other. So when anybody registers on one machine one, the machine two will not know. It's like you doing something on your laptop. If you're saving the file, the file will tell you that that file already exists. But if you take the same information onto another uh, laptop, the machine will allow you to save. It's that's how it works. So because they are offline, it is only the same machine that will not allow you to do the same more than one registration on it. But if you go to another machine to allow you, but when we finish, because because they are offline, we export the data to the national data center, and when they hit the data center, then that's what we call the matching of the biometrics. Mm. That's why we call it the duplication. So now that we are saying that we have about, about 16.9 names on the machine, if events registered today, and events data is exported to the data center. The biometrics in terms of facial, fingerprint, and bio data of events will match with all the 16.9 people in the data. For the machine determine that you are unique or you have already registered and you are already there. So mm -hmm. that's what we are doing and we call it the duplication. Okay. Um, Mr. Jonah, I'm not sure it will surprise you to learn that the Ivorians who, on the back of this fresh registration, still managed to secure identification, secure voter registration, voter ID cards, and investigations have now been, been done. You, you would think that after so many years, that will probably have stopped. And it, I, I guess it's just also the tip of the iceberg, is it not? I mean, that just imagine how many more people who are non ghanaians managed to actually get on the road, Mr. Jonah. Yeah, I, I think it uh, tells a lot about the different systems existing in Ghana and the neighboring Francophone countries. No Ghanaian can go to the Ivory Coast and do the same because there, the national identification system is very effective. Every citizen has the national identity card. You know, the, 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 the good French for, uh, uh, word for it is card de tea, what they mean that identity card. Everybody has this card. And so if you're a Ghanaian and you don't have that card, it will be impossible to cross the border and go mm. and register. The situation in Ghana is very different. And so I was very, very surprised that at a time when borders are closed and at a time when security people have been deployed to the various borders to prevent any intrusion, they were able to still get through to come and register. With what did they register? Maybe the voting system. Yeah. So I am very, very, very surprised. Should the so, vouching system be scrapped? It shouldn't be scrapped. You should just go ahead with the national ID card to make sure that every single Ghanaian, like every single Avoran has, a national ID card, which is unique. Mm. And almost a foolproof identity card that will prevent people from neighboring countries, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, and Burkina, from coming to our country to register. Mm. But we should go ahead and finish the process. Yeah. Let's, let's talk a bit about the implications of this uh, new register that we have for the 2020 election. Ms. Ahin, I mean, you have, you have endorsed the outcome. 
I wonder what this means then for the quality of the elections on December 7. What's your own projection, knowing what we've achieved? And is it possible implications on 2020? Uh, thank you very much. I think with the new register, you know, the basic thing for any good election, the big thing, when you have a good register, you will definitely have a good election. A good register is where somebody goes to the center, mentions the name, Albert Kufiahin, your name is here, you put your finger thing there and it's wet. Mm. That is the, the mark of a good register. So from how we go in about it now, I can foresee us uh, getting a very good election come 2020. I'm saying this at the backdrop of the fact that sometimes you go to a center, even though you have registered, you mention your name, you went for an exhibition, your name was there, and then they will tell you, no, this name is not this way. That is an example of a bad register. Somebody who has gone for exhibition, the name is there, and then you go for election and they tell you your name is missing. A good register is the one that has all the names of everybody. Well-spelled names, all corrections made, every little mistake removed. And the way the UC had gone about it, you know, with the registration side, I believe they will carry on with the same vim, the same zeal to do the rest of the session by going to a very good exhibition exercise. And I'm urging all Ghanaians to go for the exhibition. For most of the time, we ignore this very valuable thing. When it is time to go to the exhibition, go and see whether your name has been spelled correctly. Go and see whether there are certain things that have not been done. We, we, we stay in our rooms, we stay in our houses, we don't go to do this very important one. If you have a relative, for example, you know some people can, can pass away before the exhibition even uh, mm. is done. This is the time to go and tell the EC that he registered around this time, but he's no more. Then we started moving. The old register got bloated because Ghanaians didn't patronize it. We were not for it. Everybody was not bothered. Let us patronize the Mutas register. Let us report the dead. Let us remove names of people who are not supposed to be there. And then the EC will always have a good election. A mm. good register means a good election. I mean, Dr. Sir Bokwaku, just a final one. Um, we know because of Corona, many Ghanaians were stuck out of the jurisdiction in foreign countries. I've heard you say before that even when, even after the official closing of the of the process, you will still make room for them if they arrive to register. Um, specifically, a lot, I'm sure a lot of Ghanaians watch the show abroad. What would you say to those who are on their way coming to Ghana right now and looking forward to still register and somehow get to vote? The uh, the uh, Mr. Hugh, remember, I think in 1996, one ten Adi, who went to court that he's returned to the country and he wanted to register, and the court gave the order that he should be allowed to register. Mm -hmm. As of now, the law is clear that we can continue to register anybody, but it's, if the person registered not uh, less than 60 days, six zero. Then that person can be part of that, that year's particular election. So when they come and they make themselves available, we'll register them. But depending on when they will be available before we can add them to this register or not. But when, when they come and they make themselves available, the commission will find a way of registering them. And, and very quickly, in 30 seconds, I know going to this process, there's a lot of tension, mistrust. Um, does the EC have any plan to sort of reach out to those who in this process may have been, you know, further apart from you to try and bring them back onto the fold and reconcile. Is there a reconciliation agenda on the plan? Evans, I have been a commission for 25 years. And I say without any doubt that this is the most peaceful restation we have had. We are not saying there were no challenges. We are not saying that uh, the conviction that have been uh, acceptable. But comparatively, in 2016, I was in Kumasi, just a limited registration. Three of our kids were destroyed beyond recovery. But this exercise, mm. to the God of God, no center was attacked. Yeah. 
but, but, the back but, but for, for, those, for those who don't see that, would you at least bring them into the fold? Just, just uh, what, what, what would you do? I mean, you still need to build consensus. What would no, you say? Our, our, we could do the whole our APAC meetings. Okay. But I, I believe that for now, all those who doubted the ability for us to compare the results of results that we have done them, and behind the scene, we have been engaging ourselves. And I believe that they all know that a good job has been done. And okay. once they appreciate that a good job has been done, then the doubt of somebody trying to favor somebody and the rest is gone. I'm I can assure cool. you that automatically people having comments and those things are normal things that will happen. Yeah.